the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, man, God bless you. Oh, you know, I wanted to, I, I, picking up again where we were, uh, work, reading the uh, chapter of the day for the uh, the Bible. We on, on TikTok, I'm doing one chapter. They're reading it and uh, discussing it. Uh, I, the approach, though, for the Old Testament, because it's, it's huge, it's long, is to uh, cover a week worth of chap, you know, like eight, eight to uh, eight chapters. Uh, and and why it's playing, the audio book is playing, I will, I may at times comment on something. And that may sometimes distract you from hearing, but focus on the reading when you get a chance. Not while you're driving, but while you're reading. But the point is, we want to say that we it could majority of the time you're going to hear what the reading of the scriptures are so that you can get to past that point where people sit there and say they have, uh, uh, to the point you say you have read the Bible. You want to read it over and over again if you can, but you definitely want to be able to read it uh, at least once, you know? Uh, and then you'll see the bigger picture of the Bible, the scriptures, if you do that. Uh, I want to get to the point where start looking at maps and, and regions and where these people actually uh uh, came from. So sometimes, and if I get if I get my uh, audio correct, what I want to do sometimes is to actually uh, insert pictures and maps to give a better picture. Like like, but I won't do it this time around. I didn't do it this time around. Far as the like Eden and so forth, but we can use some of these some of the regions now they're talking about, uh, and inside injecting some of those maps in there so you can take a look at them. Uh, not this 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 first set of eight, but uh, in the future. But that's what I'm saying. So sometimes I'll comment on a, a particular piece if I can, if I think I should, I will. If not, I'll just, let's just hear the word. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God anyway, right? Uh, I just want sometimes if there's some key point, some foreshadowing of Christ, uh, I will bring those up, you know, or introductions of specific characters in the Bible that that will play a role or be linked to the New Testament. I think those things should be brought up, okay? Matter of fact, I may, I may just pause it and do it as well if I can. It just depends on how my uh, uh, audio system works out, okay? All right, well, God bless you. We're going to work on uh, Genesis chapter 37. And like I said, we do 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and maybe 44. Maybe 44. All right. And we, what I like to do is let's put those out on Sundays and on uh, Friday or Saturday for review. So because we we try to break these recordings on Sundays. Amen. All right. That's more of the time that I normally have. Uh, opposed to you know, the rest of the work week. All right, and let's see. I want to man, and one of the things too. Let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, why is it important for you to to read the uh, scriptures? I was looking at this before going to the uh, chapter. Look at this right here. Lifeway Research said, "How much of the Bible have people personally read?" And, and you can ask the question for yourself: How much you have personally read in the Bible? So this is an opportunity to to move this gap from almost half, over half of the people have not read much of the Bible. Uh, then there's a, then on the left-hand side, you got some half, some 12 percent. So let's let's tackle that and get to the point where you read it more than once. Incorporating your uh, Bible studies and so forth, I think it's worth it. I guarantee you'll love it if you get understand. That way when people are teaching the Bible or discussing the Bible, you, you got something to work with. A lot of cases that we're caught off guard and the enemy, just like the enemy, if the enemy came after Christ concerning the scriptures and tempting him, who, who are we? 
we we'll get tempted as well. So let's 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 bypass that and make sure we do what needs to be done. Because that I think that's critical. Is if we do what the word tells us to do, if we understand the word, then we make a difference. Amen. All right. Next one is uh 39. Let's put this up here. And let's also put it on 39. Let's give it a shot. See you around. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well filled in past, and after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph said, Oh, how is a man with me? But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except me, because you are his wife. Then I do such a wicked thing and sin against God. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. He caught him by his cloak and said, I need to get with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, he called her household servant. She said to them, He kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. But if you brought us came to me, you would spoil me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran. After heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care, because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. 
Amen. Now that that was a that was interesting. See, now let's set the stage. Uh, one thing you might want to get out of that is the fact is that all of us go through most of us go through some type of storm, some type of uh, weather that that shift us to a different direction. I think I like T.D. Jake said, your rejection is your uh, uh, redirection. And in this case, uh, Joseph doing all the right thing, being even recognized by the Potiphar as being a good man, uh, was was doing well. <laughs> but, you know, his wife, Potiphar's wife, said the man was attractive and she wanted to sleep with him. And uh, when she kept getting rejected, she decided to set him up. And therefore, now he was put in prison. And his interest had, I guess Potiphar had no choice. He, His wife made an accusation. And he had no witnesses or or, or anything to, to uh, counter that. That he put pop, he put uh, Joseph into prison, and but at the same time the Lord was with him, just like the Lord is with you when you're going through your storm. Just believe and trust that He'll get you out of that storm. Amen. So that that's something to look at. But you can see the stage was set. Why this is important? Because if you haven't read, I know if you have read the Bible. You know, next stage would be uh, how Joseph could this actually put him on a path where he actually would go before Pharaoh uh, and Pharaoh would recognize his, his potential, just like Potiphar did, just like the, the jailkeeper did. And you'll see that uh, this, this trajectory was shifted toward uh, Joseph becoming the second in charge of uh, Egypt. Think about it. Maybe, you know, if he stayed where he was at, it, that wouldn't happen, would it? Because Bonifer didn't have that that type of uh, credit or cheese, somebody would say. But this this redirection, even though it looked bad, it actually turned out to be a good thing that God had a plan for. All right, so this one we're going to 40. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.